and to and to encourage us toward our vision you know in our church we have a vision the vision of seeing many people come to Jesus our church we have a vision is also not to gather a big crowd as you see different leaders standing up our desire is to raise up mighty leaders we don't want to raise up wimps and wussies we want to raise up warriors we want to raise up mighty men and women even those who are young 13 and 11 we want to we want them to be able to be a world changers people who know how to use their hands not to steal from the stores but cast out demons heal the sick and open their mouth not to curse and cuss but to present the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ can somebody say amen our desire is not only to raise up mighty leaders but we wanted to see the Jesus of the Bible to be the Jesus of 21st century we don't want to be the Jesus of the Bible to look different than Jesus of 21st century the Jesus of the Bible healed people the Jesus of the Bible forgave sins the Jesus of the Bible raised the dead see we don't see that in our church so we want to show you that on the screen that this Jesus still does that through ordinary people in Florida through a doctor whom he used to bring another person from the dead so he can receive his salvation that is the Jesus from the Bible can somebody say amen and our desire is to present no other Jesus to our generation to present no other Jesus to young people and to present no other Jesus to our children then the Jesus we have an opportunity to meet from the Bible amen with that said I want to share just a, a brief message tonight that would be titled keep your focus there's three kinds of people in this world there is the bored people who are dying because there's nothing to do then there's the busy people who are dying because there's too much to do and then there are the blessed people who are living of what God is doing through them how many of you want to be blessed people tonight most of young people during this summer are struggling with the first category bored you can see on your Facebook bored please text me or I will disappear for the next three weeks <laughs> then after you finish with high school you go to the second category you become busy then your Facebook post changes I'm busy like and I'm not gonna use those words my life is so hectic I don't have time to sleep I don't have time to eat school and work school and work and many people think that because you're busy you're successful but you can be busy running on a treadmill and not getting nowhere and motion and activity Benjamin Franklin said are not the same thing just because you're moving doesn't mean that you're, move, you're heading somewhere our desire is not just to have our plate be full many young people like duct tape anything anywhere duct tape rolls it picks things up and so with young people anywhere they go in they just fill their plate and they keep themselves busy and they somehow feel like they're fulfilling God's purpose because they're busy but being busy and being blessed are two different things blessed people are busy but not all busy people are blessed our desire is not just to be busy our desire is to be blessed what is the difference between blessed and busy is that blessed people are not dying of because of too much to do they're not dying because of nothing to do they are living of what God is doing through them they're going to get a loan at the bank but they sense the presence of God with them when they go on a date because they're ready to get married they sense the presence of God with them when they go to school they sense the presence of God with their homework they have God working with them and they see things like we've seen the doctor seeing people raised from the dead brings healing and salvation and all of these things why and blessed is what exactly all of us want to do in Jesus name because somebody say amen and somebody say praise the Lord you can blame your situation on your parents you can blame your situation on the government you can blame your current situation on your poor upbringing but one thing is certain you are responsible for what you give your attention to if I could summarize it you are what you give your attention to you are what you give your attention to the hardest part with our generation today is to keep an attention many of us we have the attention of the goldfish three seconds and after that we just completely get distracted we completely lose it right away that's why they say in our generation to pay attention because attention is an expensive commodity 
you might not have gold but if you can pay attention you have something very valuable pay attention because this if you pay with this for your future you'll be able to have a blessings in your life i want to just take a, a, a verse right now read it from second peter and it's the last few verses and it will be uh, chapter 3 if i'm not mistaken and verse 17 and verse 18. you therefore beloved since you know this beforehand beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness steadfastness means your focus your concentration your assurance your confidence your faith being led away with the error of the wicked but grow in the grace and the knowledge of our lord and savior jesus christ to him be the glory both now and forever amen so this is how apostle peter ends his letter by asking people he said please be aware lest you fall from your own steadfastness let me give you a hungry generation version of the july 3rd, 23rd beware lest you lose your focus because of the mistake of other people successful men is an average man focused let me say that again a successful man is an average man focused they asked Bill Gates the secret of his success and he said this focus he said I focus on one thing they asked Chief Jobs and they said he said two things simplicity and focus Prophet T.B. Joshua on his one of his birthdays announced in front of the whole world and he said the secret of the success of my ministry is he said all throughout the 30 years of my ministry focus has not been broken he said when critics said all kinds of things against me I maintain my focus when presidents sat in front of me I maintain my focus when the building burned out I maintain my focus when people wanted to throw me put me in jail and I sat there they accused me of using some spells on people I maintained my focus when I was poor I maintained my focus when I have now a lot of fame I maintain my focus he says my goal is my focus successful man is an average man focused it's not that we lack time my friends it's we lack direction it's not that we lack gift we lack focus in our generation and because we lack focus i mean look at the sun if you take the sun it warms the whole planet whatever is shining but you take a magnifying glass and you concentrate the rays of the sun through the magnifying glass and you start fire why because of focus because of concentration because you narrow things down most of people's lives are scattered they are divided they are distracted they're doing every single thing well as they read their bible they're answering their text message as they're posting on facebook they're doing homework and they cannot stay focused and when i cannot stay focused they cannot stay productive their lives are boyfriend one week church another week this one week another month and they just kind of yo-yo nothing is focused nothing is determined and therefore there is going to be no success where there is no focus Jesus said enter the narrow gate and follow the narrow path because it leads to life what does that mean what does a narrow mean focused most of us think of narrow means you can't do this you can't do this you can't do that and that's not what Jesus meant Jesus didn't come to tell us what we can do what we can't he came to tell us that if you want to have life you have to narrow your life to something that is the most important you have to pursue it and you have to pay a price pay attention to what you're supposed to do focus i remember many years ago i've learned this the hard way i was driving to meet one of my wonderful leaders for dinner and as i was driving you have to understand one thing about driving is that because you have a license and insurance and because you have gas and oil in the engine that does not give you the permission to make attention behind the wheel optional at the time they had no law driving and texting was prohibited and at that time we had myspace anybody remembers myspace those are good old days floppy disks vhs and myspace yes 395 bridge i remember it like yesterday driving to my friend and my MySpace my notification went up. 
I can mention this person's, I remember it like yesterday, this person posts, posts on my MySpace a comment. I listened to one of your sermons on YouTube, it impacted me so much. Here I am driving and I am distracted. I'm no longer paying my attention to the road. I have my hand on my wheel, I have my, my foot on my pedal, everything is going good with the car. I am not an illegal driver, I have an insurance, everything is fine. The only thing was missing in that driving is my focus. And you know what was missing in the driving? Everything else. Because right in that second, I don't know where the car appeared. That car was right in front of me. I slammed the brakes and I break the car's main body frame and shatter the bumper of mine, get a big fat ticket and come back home, literally devastated. I had insurance, I had gas, I had a car. I had right mind. The only thing I lacked is attention. Most of us think this, if I have education, if I go to church, if I have a good boyfriend who's a Christian and I am ready to get married, if I have everything that I need, it doesn't matter where my life is focused or not. What matters is whether I live right or not. You are wrong. Apostle Peter says, don't fall from your focus. You have to protect your focus. As a church, we must understand because we have a C, beautiful building and a worship band and a pastor, that does not mean that we can let our focus be on something else than what Jesus told us to focus on. There was no driving and texting 2000 years ago, but Jesus knew that this day will come. And he said those days people would plow and drive and text and plow. And he would say anytime you put your hands to the plow, he says do not become distracted. He said don't think that because my hands are on the plow, I can turn my head to whatever it wants to look. Jesus says if that is going to happen, you are not going to be able to be fit for the kingdom of God. The success of our church is not going to depend on how talented we are. It's going to depend on this one thing how focused we are. The success of your individual life is not going to depend on how much time you have but how focused you are. How focused you are will determine how successful you will be. You have to do everything it takes to protect your focus. You have to remove these lies. If I don't smoke, if I don't drink, if I don't sleep around, if I don't look at pornography, if I come to church every Wednesday and Sunday and I bring 10% of my income and once in a while I help my home group leader and when the church has an activity I am there. That is enough. But I can sit here, my mind can be somewhere else, my life is completely scattered and shattered. It's not my purpose to win people to Jesus Christ. My friend, that life could end up in a wreck because your life's value is in its focus. Concentration. Being focused. Amen? Amen. Turn to your neighbors to be focused. <laughs> Especially now. I understand most of the people that I hear when I came from the camps, most of the young people, their challenge is this. They say, Vlad, I can't be focused in my prayer. He's like, when I start praying, I just lose focus. He's like, I just lose focus all the time when it comes to the things of God. Even in the church, like I could listen for two minutes and I just lose focus. And what they're saying is this, and that now we have this disease in our generation called ADD. It seems like everybody's got it. <laughs> it's like if you can't pay attention for more than two minutes, you're not doing it in school, ADD, here's medicine. But in reality, I don't think many of us struggle with ADD. I think most of us, the real problem is that it's not that we can't focus. It's that we tend to focus more on things that are less important. We have this tendency to focus more on things that are less important. There is something important, but yet you drive your attention to something that's less important. Peter is walking on the waves and Jesus, who is, we all believe, more important 
but the waves are less important and yet Peter's attention goes for the waves that are less important we tend to focus more on that which is less important if you will look even in your school studies as you're studying your school at that moment what is more important the school but you're focused on Facebook as you are praying what is more important the prayer and the Bible but you're focused on answering the text message even in the church as you are sitting what is more important to pay attention to the preacher but many times there's the temptation there is the Instagram notification that went up we our battle is not that we can't focus it's that we tend to focus always on the secondary things same thing happens many times in the church we tend to focus on the church politics many people would fight over the fact what color of carpet we will have and people would divide the church over the fact on which the dress code people should have when the real focus of the church has to be the presence of God and the presence of people people being saved people being healed and people being discipled and the kind of hymnals the kind of songs and how loud the music is that is important but that is a myspace text message that needs to be left behind we need to keep our eyes on the road and let God take care of the stuff on our phone can somebody say amen our focus is the Holy Spirit not necessarily the agenda of few people who are offended with previous church experiences our focus is on God text messages are important when you're driving but during your driving they are secondary and when you give your attention to what is secondary you can find yourself being completely wrecked like just a few months ago a lady who was driving and posted a post on Facebook said this song makes me happy and boom next thing that happens she hits a truck slides out of highway and she dies on an act on, right there in an accident the police comes and they check and she had no drinking she was not on drugs nothing was going on of that sort until they checked her phone and they found out that just a minute before she slid off the highway she posted that post what happened the person did not pay attention to where they were going and they gave the attention to their phone and most of us we think I can pay attention to the both I can pay attention to my future paying attention to my past I can pay attention to God and paying attention to my boyfriend who doesn't want to do anything with God I can pay attention to God and pay attention to my friends who are always enticing me to bad things and you're dividing your attention and it's usually always your future that suffers and you suffer as a result nothing wrong with the phone nothing wrong with secondary things but they need to be secondary when it comes to your attention your future demands your attention the promises of God demand your attention the vision of God for our church it demands our focus that everything from the beginning till end even in our home groups in our prayers we are a focused church our goal is not to fill this sanctuary our goal is to bring a revival to our generation and that is our focus can somebody say amen, amen. the Bible says in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh that is where the church is going it's important when all the things are buzzing on the left and on the right when things are just calling your name on the left and the right that we put that on the side and says you come second God's promise comes first when somebody comes to church or leaves the church we say this is more important than this when Gideon had a promise from God he will conquer Midianites but 20,000 people were scared then more thousands of people they couldn't go and his crowd got smaller and smaller and smaller but Gideon realized I cannot pay attention to my phone I gotta pay attention to my future and the amazing part God took care of the rest pay attention to your future pay attention to the promises of God stay focused to what God called you to do stay focused to why you were born on this earth why God saved you why God gave you the Holy Spirit and God will take care of the rest of the details if you give your attention to the rest of the deals they will damage your life can somebody say amen, amen. Apostle Peter says do not lose your steadfastness because of the error of the wicked people and I recognize that sometimes the reason why we lose our focus is because people around us lose theirs many times when people around us start to misbehave we feel like because we're so connected to them they drag us down Paul Peter is saying don't fall falling means you're on the top when you have focus you are here but sometimes people around us they don't have focus they are here 
I'm not saying they're bad. I'm not saying they're foolish. I'm not saying they're not educated. I'm not saying they're poor. But just no focus, no meaning. Life is about eight hours. You drink, you watch soap opera, and then you go to sleep. And this whole little cycle, that's all. For you, life is more than that. You have focus. You know that you owe your gifts, your body, and everything to the Creator who gave it to you. You know that one day you'll stand naked right in front of the Creator. Nobody else is going to be there and you're going to give an account. Only your soul, your naked soul is going to stand before Him. And you know that for that day, you have to give every day living your life focused. You know that life is not games and parties. And if you narrow it down, you can be successful. But if you spread it around, you will be literally devastated and destroyed. So you live focused right here. But the problem is all of your homies, they're not focused. They are on the bottom and Peter is saying don't let the life of people who lack focus around you bring you down. He says don't come down from your steadfastness because of the error of the wicked people. Don't be so connected to someone that when they go down you go with them. God never fell from his throne when Satan left heaven. God says, you want to be bad? I'll still be who I'm supposed to be. You can take one third of heaven, but it's nothing is going to change about me. I never change. I'm going to keep my focus. When Judas came and tried to stumble Jesus, betray Jesus, Jesus never lost his focus. When 11 disciples ran for their life, one guy ran naked, was so embarrassed to be with Jesus. He would rather want naked than be with Jesus. Yet Jesus said this, he fixed his eyes on the price and he never waver, wavered. Why? Because he knew I'm here to live focused and especially when everyone around me lost theirs. When the brothers of Joseph lost their focus, Joseph said, you may lose yours. I'm going to keep mine. Remember, people who will keep their focus when everybody else is losing it, one day, you're going to come and help those people who lost their focus and help them bring them up. But don't ever let them bring you down. Amen. Can somebody say amen? amen? Let's be a church to be focused. Many years ago when our church started, our pastor had only one focus. To see us being raised up and to see us bring people who don't know Jesus from our community. People try to sway him. People try to make make sure we have our services only in Russian. Make sure we have our services allowed for this and for that. And our pastor paid a price for years upon years of keeping this focus. We as a younger generation owe to God and owe it to our pastor not to have a broken focus. So that our focus is not to entertain few faithful. And our focus is not to fill this place and walk around thinking that we have achieved because this place is filled. Our focus is to see the promise of Joel be a reality. In the last days, says the Lord, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will not do weed, they will prophesy. And young and old will see dreams and visions. Can somebody say amen? Let's not lose our focus when everybody else loses theirs. Apostle Peter Say, was saying that because in his generation when Jesus came people were challenged no longer to focus on the law but to focus on Christ and they were familiar with the law and Christ was something new and here we have Jesus died he went to heaven and apostles are encouraging the new believers in Christ saying please keep your focus on something that's higher on Jesus don't focus on the commandments. Not that they're not important, but they're secondary. Christ is first. But there was one more thing they had to focus on. It's on the promise of Jesus that he will come back. Disciples literally thought Jesus will come back in their time. So here is Jesus who passed away, who went to heaven, and disciples are teaching all other followers, please focus on the coming of Jesus. But the Bible says the scoffers started to come around and say have you noticed ever since Jesus left nothing changed we're just getting persecuted people are dying some apostles already done few are left guys he's not coming back all of this was a good talk 
but he's not coming back and Peter replied to those people who wanted to remove the focus of believers he said let me tell you something the earth that you see as reality today the earth that you see today the people dying people living people born people dying and it seems like it's just been like this all the time it's going to be like this Peter says stop this word that Jesus said that he's coming back this exact word created this cycle that has become a reality that causes you to doubt the very word that created this cycle he said there was a time there was no births there was no deaths there was no human life and this word spoke and it started this word spoke and the flood came this word spoke and Jesus came this word spoke and Jesus will come again he says remember you focus on something higher than the reality focus on something that created the reality which is the word of God Can somebody say amen I want to encourage you today keep your focus on Christ not your crisis keep your focus on the promise not your problems keep your focus on the healing power of God not your sickness keep your focus on who God says and what God said not on what is happening around you because you must understand your reality is subject to change the word and the promise of God can never ever change can somebody say amen for thousands of years people all have discovered one law this is the law of gravity anything that comes up must come down this law means if you try to jump up the law of gravity pulls you back People lived under this law. People respected this law and people honored this law. But just a few generations ago, they discovered another law. The law of aerodynamics, which says you don't have to come down if you go up. If you tell somebody in remote areas of Africa, that you can put 300 people in a big balloon and it will float above and nobody's holding it they will say you're crazy because the only law they are aware of and their focus is the law of gravity the old testament was like this law of gravity it was to prove to people if you try to go up you're gonna always fall you're sinful you can't do it it was to reveal the wretchedness the horribleness of sin but jesus comes and he said, I want to introduce you another law, the law of grace, the law of my spirit. He says, when I take you up, you're going to go up and you're not going to come down. He said, through my gift, you will reign in life. When the law of sickness would come to Jesus, Jesus will touch the person and then a new law, a law of aerodynamics will kick in. A person will walk out completely healed because typically a sick person has to die but in Jesus' presence a sick person will begin to live for the glory of God I want to tell you something if you're looking at something in your life right now and it looks so real for other people it destroyed their life I want to tell you something today there is something higher than that that you have to focus on it's called the law of the Holy Spirit the law of the grace of God the law of the power of God and because of that you will overcome because of that you will arise for the glory of God keep your focus on something that's higher keep your focus on something that's bigger keep your focus on something that's mightier keep your focus on something that's more powerful and you will see that you will overcome for the glory of God and somebody say amen. amen Satan's aim for your life will be to steal your focus by offering you something that's secondary at first what is secondary will seem appealing and innocent but when you trade your focus for what's the most important that which is secondary will kill you when you trade your focus from that which is the most important to that which is secondary it will hurt you just recently a month ago I had an opportunity to speak to a wonderful young man that whom I'm still praying for works all night long and goes to school all day long has barely any time to sleep has not been in the church for a very long time and at that day that I walked into his house his wife left him he has one child a wonderful young man and I asked him I said why are you running so crazy why you are so busy why you cannot cut it down a little bit why you don't have time for God he said I just need to finish school fast I'm like what good did it do that you're finishing school fast losing your family 
losing your child and most likely you're going to lose your health with the way you're going he said well it's just important to me nobody in my family did it like that and I just need to prove to someone and here is a man racing 70 miles per hour in a head collision paying attention to his phone I want to tell you something the enemy will offer to you something good as long as you can take your eyes of something that's the most important and that which is good it seems so naive but if it comes at the price of missing church missing your bible not having good friends around you not having time for your family not having time to do what you're called to do I'm going to tell you something what's going to do it's going to backfire ask Isa and he will tell you the bowl of soup didn't kill him but it came at a, such a high price that he lost his birthright and he lived in regret all the rest of his life it's not worth to trade something that is so important for something that could wait or for something that could always come second third or fifth yeah. and somebody say amen remember last week I was talking to one wonderful gentleman he took me by the river and uh, wanted to just started to talk to me about some issues that were happening to him and two years ago he met this girl who he fell in love with her and he took his attention off of what was very important God family and his calling and he went after this girl he was still going to church but just like I was driving to my friend headed this way but my head somewhere else that's how he was coming to church he was coming to church praising God but my heart and my attention is completely somewhere else finally this girl responded back started to like him back everything was going well until she moves on to college and next thing that happens is that she says I don't want to have nothing with you but my homeboy already got attached to this little device called his girlfriend so he started making trips to her college at first she was saying oh you're so nice you don't have to do this after that she says please you are being a hindrance to my studies until she's labeled him as a stalker here is a lover to a stalker in a few months he said now she's with someone else he said it's been two years my heart is shattered and broken and he said I look back at my life he said Vlad it's been two years he said and I cannot come back to the same place I used to be I cannot regain my attention back what is wrong with having a girlfriend nothing but if it comes at the price of paying attention to God that girlfriend is gonna kill you it will kill your potential it will kill your relationship with God can somebody say amen